ever wish that you could just make a few simple and easy changes and have your whole life change? I do. But you know what? I think you can. You can have new perspective and calm down. You can get guidance that really works for you. You can feel good about yourself, even if you think you don't like yourself. You can be happier and you can feel healthier. In today's video, I've come up with five five minute habits that can change your life. And I don't say that lightly because change can be huge or it can be simple and it can be ongoing or it could be just for now. The key is you have to do them. The good thing is they're easy. And in this video, I'm talking about those five things, but I'm interspersing it with an art project that I'm working on, which is about composition for any kind of artwork, but in this case, more abstract painting. You may or may not be interested in that, but I hope you'll stay with me until the end because what you'll learn about these five simple things really can change your life. Okay, this is what I'm starting with. I'm going to use watercolor and washi tape. I'll show you that in a minute. But I came across this uh, recently from David M. Kessler Fine Art. And I'll put a link below where you can go pick this up if you want to. It's free. But it's 10 classic design compositions. And this is mainly for abstract art, which is what I'm moving more toward in my painting life. So I thought I would just do some miniatures and paint some of these with watercolor in my sketchbook and just see how they turn out and which ones I like. And I will probably just do six because that's what I have room for on one of these pages. So to start with, I'm using some washi tape to just tape off the squares because they're mostly, well, they're, they're a bit of both actually because there's squares here and there's, no, there's squares here and rectangles here, but I don't think it matters too much. I just want to roughly divide this and it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm the only one that has to please and I don't care that much. Close enough. So some of them will be more square like these and these are more rectangular, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to just start with this cruciform one. What we've got is this. Okay, I also wanted to talk about these five five-minute habits that will change your life. The first one is to drink big glasses of water every day. I'm prone to getting dehydrated, and so when I need a glass of water, I get a big glass like this, and I'll drink most of it all at once. And I found after a while that if I didn't, I was just still thirsty. I found that drinking a lot of water at one time and several times a day actually made a huge difference. And I'm not going to go into a lot of science about being dehydrated, but there are lots of reasons why you don't want to get dehydrated. And if you're really interested, just look that up. But I was at my naturopath one day and talking about some things that were a problem for me and she said, maybe you're just dehydrated. I'm like, what? It hadn't ever occurred to me, but I made an effort to drink more water and I actually started feeling better. So with that, I'm going to have a drink right now. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and I might come back into it with something else. I'm sure I will. And I want to now try, and this one kind of intrigues me. So I'm going to do that one. This one, I have to admit, kind of confuses me. So I'm going to do this one over here. So it's got that. And I'm also kind of looking at the other shades in here. So I would say when it comes to drinking water, one thing you can do is put out a pitcher of water in the morning. It's easier to drink if it's, or to drink lots, if it's room temperature than if it's really cold from the fridge. But that's a personal preference. So you have to kind of go what works for you. If you live in a hot place and drinking room temperature water just makes you cringe, then by all means, cool it off. But I think you'll find it's, it's such a healthy habit that it's, it's gonna change your life by just making you feel better. Let's do some of this. Uh, I want more contrast. Number two is every day do something that makes you feel happy. Life can be a drag and we can 
get so caught up in whatever makes us unhappy so that we're actually concentrating on unhappiness which makes you more unhappy and even if you're trying hard to be happy you'll probably be less happy than if you do something that you know makes you happy so what you need to do is just just sit down and and think about what things actually make you happy is it going for a walk talking to a friend reading a book for five minutes a hobby sewing creating something crafting there's hundreds of things that could do it but you need to know if you had trouble in this area then take some time ask yourself what makes you happy now when i look at this it doesn't really say the same thing to me the next one this is the next habit be thankful now it's kind of a it's kind of trendy to go on about being grateful which is great. I mean, absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, I prefer thankful because to me, it says I'm thankful to, to someone, not just generally grateful. I'm thankful to God for a great many things. I would say I'm, I'm really thankful. And here's a little bit of um, wisdom, I guess you could say. You know how people say, Everything happens for a reason. I want to say that is not true. That says when something terrible happens, there's some reason behind it. It is not true. And the reason I say that is because everything happens because it has a cause, not because there's a reason. So if you're saying, well, there's always a reason. So something terrible happens, somebody gets sick and dies. There's, you can fill in the blanks. There's a car accident that kills people you love. There is no reason behind that. It's not like God says, okay, this terrible thing is going to happen, but you're going to, I'm behind it because he's absolutely not. And the reason I can say that is because God is 100% good. It doesn't even make sense that he would do horrible things to people. Makes zero sense. You can tell I feel a little bit passionate about this because God gets a bad rap from people all the time because they just don't know him. They just don't know what he's really like. However, I will say if something terrible does happen, God bends over backwards to bring something good out of it. So when people say, you know, I had cancer and it was the best thing that ever happened to me because of all the good that came out of it, well, that's because God came along and said, you know, this is a terrible thing that has happened to you, but just give me a chance and I will bring something good out of it. I'm going to open these ones up and see if we can get something bright in here. I have to keep looking at my little thing here. Okay, we've got five things going off in all directions. These are like neon colors here. Anyway, I think we all need to start saying, instead of everything happens for a reason, say everything has a cause, but God will bring something good out of it. And I believe in a good God because God's book tells us he's good. He is love. He is love. People say, you know, this terrible thing happened. Something good came out of it. Well, yeah. If you're a good parent, for example, would you cause something terrible to happen to your child? Just hoping that something good will come out of it? Absolutely not. Who would do that? It's just ludicrous. God doesn't do it either. So banish that thought from your mind. The other thing too is the Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. It doesn't say for everything gives thanks. And it's misquoted all the time. It's in everything. So no matter what you're going through, there's always something good. And that good thing is God. So you can always have something to give thanks for. Always. I mean, that makes total sense to me. No matter what you're going through, give thanks for the good stuff, not the bad stuff. And pray the bad stuff away. Simple. It's simple. Here's another one. Read or listen to something positive every day, even for a couple of minutes. Or just say something uplifting to yourself about yourself. So when you look in the mirror in the morning, say, you look pretty good today. Or you're doing well keep going or you have a great body because it works you know what I mean we say so many self-deprecating things and what good does that do I don't do that very much but I did something you know that wasn't very smart the other day we had arranged to go see our kids and I've had a little pile of stuff I made some shorts for my grandkids and I had them re had it all ready to go. We drove for an hour and a half to meet them. While there, I remembered 
that the stuff I wanted to bring them was still on the stool at home. At which point, I felt pretty dopey. However, not the end of the world, you know. Okay, let's look at the shading in here, for example. So this thing maybe works a little bit better. I'll put some, some white in here. This is kind of opaque. I'm not really sure about this composition. Okay, um, so read something positive. Listen to a podcast. Watch a video, have a book of quotes, read something from the Bible, whatever works for you. Just make it a point to do something positive for yourself every day. Say something, listen, get positivity into your life because it makes a huge difference, a really huge difference to how you feel about your life, how you feel about what's going on with you. Okay, number five in this the five minutes habits is sit down and be quiet in a quiet spot and ask God what he wants you to know today. You can say, um, what do you want me to know about how you feel about me? What do you want me to know about what I should do today? What do you want me to know about my kids? What do you want me to know about whatever? And the key is to listen. Don't be afraid of doing this. It's, it's easy. And you will be amazed how fast God talks to you. The thing is, things will pop into your mind. That's God talking to you. So if you say, what will I make for supper tonight? And the thought of chicken pops into your mind. That's God talking to you. I do that for like, what should I wear today? Because sometimes the weather is like back and forth. And I'm like, I have no idea what to wear today because who knows what it's going to be like. And I'll just stand in front of my closet and say, okay, God, what should I wear today? Invariably, he'll say, that shirt, that sweater, those pants. It could not be easier. Trust me on this. It could not be easier. Okay, there's my trials. This has a lot more paint in it, so I'm going to put a little bit of um, darker stuff over in here, down in here. This one follows the rules of, of composition really closely, which is uh, divided into thirds and put your main features on those thirds. So if I'm looking at these, you can say, okay, this is on on that line. I didn't do the circles, but you can see that the that most of the heavy stuff is on those thirds lines. Uh, same here. They're not in the middle, they're on the thirds. This one has white here that stands out and it's on that those thirds. Same with this one. This one is is a little bit tilted, but again, it's it's not in the middle. So those are that's just a general rule of composition. I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to see what I think about it. Please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell so you get the notifications when I have new videos, which happens every week. And also leave a comment. Tell me what you think about these five habits that you could fit into your life. Not one of them takes very long. Very easy to change. And click the like button, the thumbs up, because that tells the algorithm that people like my videos and that will help me out. And I'll see you next time.